and that we were encouraging bad behavior at her house. Yeah. Hey, little Johnny, when you go to your mama's, you make sure you don't listen to her. <laughs> yes. Gosh, I still just crack up about it to this day. But you know that does happen in some cases. You're listening to the Nacho Kids Podcast, where we discuss all things step family related. Real stories, real people, real help. Your hosts are the creators of the Nacho Kids Method and the Nacho Kids Academy Step Family Coaching Team, Lori and David Sims. Welcome to episode 141 of the Nacho Kids Podcast. (laughs) Welcome, indeed. So, David, let's make our announcements quickly so we can get into talking about this. Okay. All right. Today, the winner of the Linda Dunham Nacho Kids Academy Scholarship is... Danny D. Woo! Danny D. Check your email and we will get you started in the Nacho Kids Academy. Is it the Danny D I know? No, it's not my Danny D. <laughs> my Danny D ain't married. <laughs> I was, no, I was like, what is he doing? Nah. <laughs> Don't forget, David and I are going to be in Fort Worth, Texas with Laura Petherbridge, the smart stepmom. For more details, go to nachokids.com slash Fort Worth. 2022. All right. Sweet. All right. I think that's all I got. Oh, well, let's mention the stepmom view. We haven't done that in a while. Okay. Y'all check out the stepmom view. It's me, Heather Hetchler, Laura Petherbridge, Heidi Farrell, and Melanie Anthony answering boo coos of step family questions. And it's a little entertaining too. It's a little entertaining. I'm sure it's a lot entertaining. (laughs) What's entertaining is watching our faces. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure. When I ask some of the questions. (laughs) All right. So our guest today is stepmom in Tennessee. She has been blending for three years, has a stepson 10, that they have 50-50, an hour son 2, and an hour's daughter due in April. Hmm. Why are you say mm? Mm. Because <laughs> it's about to change the whole dynamic. Well, no, because they've already got an hour son, too. Yeah, this is our daughter. I know it'll change, but not like <laughs> if they didn't have an hour's kid. <laughs> David, you're going to scare her to death listening to this. She, she, she's going to go into labor listening to this. <laughs> All right. The hardest part of her blend is different parenting styles and discipline. Her best advice? Adopt the Nacho Kids method. <laughs> of course. And people, I don't tell them to put that. I, <laughs> I just say, what's the best advice you would give somebody in a blend? Yeah, it's it'll save you a lot of stress. I saw somebody today in the Facebook group that was complaining about the stepson not acknowledging their bio daughter's birthday and how upset they were. And I'm like, okay, I get it, but... Really? That's not something that should even bother you at all. Just nacho it. No. I mean, it. I think it hurts us for our kids when -hmm. somebody doesn't acknowledge their birthday. But honestly, I don't think, well, I think a lot of times the kids could care less. Oh, yeah. For the most part. Yeah. So, it's okay. I mean, I don't know how old these kids were, but... It doesn't yeah, really matter. <laughs> they're all teenagers. Like teenagers, that's what they do. Not you know, not trying to say, oh, bad behavior is okay, but at the same time, why should the bio parent, you know, why should you say, why don't you make your son come down and tell her happy birthday? What what difference does it make? Why put all this stress on everybody? Because you want somebody to fake like they give a crap about your kid's birthday. Well, and that's what I was gonna say is do you want them to tell them because they genuinely mean it or because they're made to. Because if they do it because they're made to, they're just going to resent your kid more and you. All right. You're you're taking what you think is going to be a good thing and you're creating all this bad around it. You know, the your significant other is not going to be happy about it because why would they be? The kid's not going to be happy about it. Even your own kid, bio kid may not be happy about it. Well, that's what I was going to say is the own bio kid will probably be like, they didn't mean that. Mom must have made them. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, just, I don't know, just leave it alone. There's some so many other things to be concerned over, and that is not one of them. Choose your battles, people. My son actually told me that last night. <laughs> yeah. Well, not just choose your battles, but choose how you let other people's 
actions or inactions affect you. You have that choice. You can't choose how douchebaggy that person is, but you can choose how you let it affect you. Y'all listen to this. My dad messaged me on Facebook (laughs) and told me happy birthday. And he calls me later that day. And I'm thinking, oh, my daddy's going to tell me happy birthday and he's going to sing happy birthday to me. Nope, did not mention it at all. And I'm his daughter, his favorite daughter. And all I get is a Facebook post, happy birthday. At least you got that. Well, thanks, John. (laughs) Yeah, he's John when I'm not very happy with him. But I love my daddy. It's okay. See, I I still love him. It's all right. And if I wanted to, I could call him and say, listen here, you douchebag. You didn't tell me happy birthday except for on Facebook. And you know what he would say? You're lucky I did anything at all. (laughs) Or he might even say happy birthday. But then in your mind, you're going, oh, yeah, only because I even brought this up. Did you say that? Exactly. And so you're not going to get what you want anyway at that point. And yes, I said exactly. (laughs) That's a new word. (laughs) Okay, wait a minute. One of the most unique things about stepmom and Tennessee's blend. I can't wait to see David's face when I say this. She became a stepmom when she was 16 years old. David, pick your eyeballs up back off your desk. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. And that's, we're going to stop there and we're going to let y'all listen to this. Good law. All right, David, say your spiel. I can't. I'm, I'm just my mouth. <laughs> All right. So first, let's hear a word about the Academy. There is a way to save your sanity and your relationship, and it's called the Nacho Kids Academy. In the Nacho Kids Academy, you will learn the skills and knowledge to properly nacho, techniques to handle step family challenges, ways to improve your communication, and much, much more. Visit NachoKidsAcademy.com and sign up today to join other step parents who are seeing the life-changing benefits of nachoing. Again, that's NachoKidsAcademy.com. Today, we have Stepmom in Tennessee. Hey, Stepmom in Tennessee, how are you? (laughs) <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Doing good. So how long have you been blending? Well, I I guess officially, I would say um, three years. Okay. And how many stepkids do you have? I have one. I have a stepson and he's 10. All right. And how often do y'all have him? Everything is 50-50. We have him every other week. And when I say 50-50, it's, that includes decision making and all. And what do they do if they can't agree? (laughs) Well, they argue about it (laughs) for a hot minute and then they just kind of forget about it or they do what we're in right now, which is almost a year long custody battle. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Yes. It's been, um, it's gotten worse as we've got on, gone on. It's getting pretty nasty. Well, you said you'd listen to our podcast, so you know I'm not a fan of the family court system. No, and I'm not either. <laughs> I was a kid of the family court system. And so, yeah, no. I'm, Were you? Yes, I was a stepkid myself. So. Ah, oh. okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that too. Yeah. Well, before I get too far off track, how many kids do you have? I have a two-year-old son and I have my first daughter due in April. Oh, congratulations. Yes, thank you. What's going on with the court system? Why is it taking so long? Is it the COVID crap or just the normal, oh, let's delay and get more money out of you? I think, yeah, it's definitely let's delay and get more money out of you. But it's our lawyer, I'll have to say, she has been on her A game. But for whatever reason, baby mama's lawyer loves to extend things at least four months in advance. So like we had... We'll start with mediation. The way the court the court started with us was her lawyer just sent us a letter with her proposed parenting plan. Of course, we didn't agree. We hired a lawyer when our lawyer reached out to her. She wanted to schedule the mediation at least four months out. Didn't understand the reasoning for that, but it's been like that ever since. So after mediation, we were going back and forth with paperwork. My husband didn't want to agree to court until my stepson had went to therapy Mm -hmm. because he seriously believes that there's a lineation going on. 
at her house, which it's obvious there is, but what do you do, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyways, she didn't want to schedule that court hearing until four months out. (laughs) Do you think maybe that lawyer is just so busy? Well, so that's what we were thinking too, but there's just no way because our lawyer is a lot bigger than hers Mm -hmm. as far as like busyness goes and like, I guess you could say popularity, yeah, so to speak. And our lawyer told us, she was like, there's no way that her schedule is just four months out. There's no way. So in result of her not wanting to cooperate with the therapy court date, we had the judge sign an order because baby mama's lawyer didn't want to. She would never get back with us as far as when she could go to court. All she all she said that it would be at least four months out for her. And so our lawyer reached out to the courts with a motion for court. I don't really know the proper wording. Mm-hmm. And he scheduled it for that next month. And she very well was going to accommodate that. We get to the day before the court date and her lawyer reaches out to our lawyer and says, oh, I've got my client to agree. We don't have to go to court tomorrow. <laughs> so huh. I don't know what her motive is with that. She's just very slow, so to speak. And she's not good at communication with our lawyer. I don't think she's good at communication, period, if I'm being honest. Yeah. But yeah, so that's kind of why it's taken so long. We we don't really know why, but we finally got around to scheduling depositions we had depositions scheduled for October and baby mama's lawyer never got back with us their answers for the discovery mm-hmm. that we put on them. So our lawyer emailed, called everything and her lawyer would not get back with her. And so our lawyer filed a motion to comply and the judge granted it. And so baby mama has to pay us our court costs for everything related to this discovery and lawyer fees. Good. Yes. So that was very surprising how that kind of transpired. Anyway, so ever since then, she's been very communicative. So in October, we was like, you know, if you can get these to us this day, you know, we can do mid-November to end November. And she said, no, I'm going to push it out until February. (laughs) And we were like, we, our baby is literally due like a month from that. Like, can we not? And anyways, they, of course, they wouldn't agree. So we've got depositions the 1st of February. And, oh, that's just crazy. And you would think that, well, yeah, I don't know about in your state, but in South Carolina, they have, I guess it's the 365 rule or something where court cases, they have to prove why it went beyond a year. And it can't be any crap of, oh, well, we were just slow. There has to be a reason. Yeah, and I've not heard of anything like that for us. I mean, at least nobody's made us aware of anything. Our lawyer's not like too concerned with it. She's just trying to push her and get her going as best as she can. But it's just, she's just, we've noticed it's a pattern with her. Like she always tells us dates and the dates are always four months out. And that's at the least. So. Wow. And all that does too is increase the time that y'all have to communicate, which costs you money. So I'm so glad she had to pay your attorney's fees. Exactly. I don't know how it's going to work yet, but she's not had to pay them yet. I don't know if she pays them at the end of the case. I don't know how it works. Yeah, at the end, they should have in there that she has to pay them within a certain time frame yeah. and all that happy stuff. I will suggest something, and you may want to mention this to your lawyer. Mm-hmm. In the final order, make it say that attorney fees are part of support because okay. if they put it, the wording that way, it means if she files bankruptcy, she can't get out of paying those attorney's fees. Nice. Okay. Yeah. It has to be something like she owes such and such as an incident of support. If they just use that word incident of support, it can't be dismissed in bankruptcy, at least not in South Carolina. So check with your attorney. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely will. Because if not, you could get stuck with them again. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. My husband would be so mad. (laughs) Oh, honey. Oh, Lord. (sighs) So what are y'all going to court for now specifically to get more time? No. So the way that it transpired was 
my stepson, his grades, they wasn't bad. They was just like C's, like he had a D last year. And that concerned all of us. Baby mama always called us saying that he was not behaving at her house. She could not control him, all of this crazy stuff. And my husband was like, I don't know why he's like that at your house. Like, he's not like that here. We do not have any behavioral issues out of him. You know, like, he's great. He does his chores. He says, yes, ma'am, no, sir. Like, I, I don't understand why you're having all these problems out of him. Anyway, so with that, she was saying that the problems were resulting from our house and that we were encouraging bad behavior at her house. Yeah. Hey, little Johnny, when you go to your mama's, you make sure you don't listen to her. (laughs) Yes. Gosh, I still just crack up about it to this day. But you know that does happen in some cases. Yeah. Yes, you are right. That's just crazy to me. Like, yeah, we don't, like, we're very private people. And I told my husband, out of all the people that, she could accuse us of trying to say that like I just I'm, I was just so baffled by it because she knows better yeah. like she knows <laughs> anyway so he had made a C on his last report card before she decided to try to get full custody so baby mama loves to do this thing or love to uh, do this thing where we just met up and tried to cut co- what the talks that was supposed to be whenever we met up was how to best tackle these problems with stepson. So that we'd beat up for these talks and all it would be, is, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, is just her and his stepdad gossiping about my stepson. Like, I mean, like just talking, just complaining about him, like things that he does that they don't like. And, and it irritated me because number one, it's not my place to say anything, but my husband wouldn't say anything. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, if you're not going to say anything, you at least need to be recording this. Yes. He'd be so scared to record because like if something happened and like the beeping sound went off or. Yeah. (laughs) He was just paranoid. So they would, they would just meet up and they would try to like just gossip about him with this. Like I, I, I still can't wrap my head around it. Like what their motive was with it. Right. And we were sick of these so-called talks. Mm -hmm. And she had messaged us after this last C and she said, we need to meet up and discuss how we're going to tackle this. And we're like, you know, we just ignored her because we're like, no, like the, the, the talks get us nowhere. We never come to a conclusion. And no, we're just not doing it. And so we just, the first time we just didn't text her back. And she messaged again and said, I would like to discuss, you know, his grades with you guys. Once again, can we please find a date that works for everybody? And my husband replied back to her and said, I'm sorry, but I feel like those talks get us nowhere. And I don't feel like that's the solution to best help him. But we can get on a phone call and I'll tell you what mine and his stepmom's actions are planning to be about it. And as far as what happens at years and stepdad's house, that's up to you guys. Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, that's not a way to approach it because he needs to have the consistency and we need to have the same exact punishment at each house. And my husband just never texts her back. And it was from that point on, she was all of a sudden mom of the year. She was calling every night. Stepson got a C on the midterm. That was whenever she wanted to talk to us for the last time. On the final grade card, he got the C in the same class. And he was with us when we got it. And she called to talk to him that night. And she was like, it's okay. We're going to get through this mom's going to help you get through this and we're going to get to the bottom of these bad grades. You know, I know there's more to it than just you not paying attention. I know that you're struggling and I'm going to, I'm going to be the one to help you. And we, so we knew right then and there that she was up to something because typically it would be, oh no, when you come back, you're not having your phone. You're not having this. You're not having that. You're not doing this whole nine yards. Like, I mean, Mm -hmm. Level 10 of discipline over a C, quite frankly. Right. And, that, you know, you just got your kids. Like, you've got your kids that are, like, straight A kids. And then you've got these kids, C, B, A. Like, you might have a D here. Some kids just that you have to stay on them. They're just not straight A kids. Right. Like, does right. that make sense? Yeah. And my stepson, he's just one of those that's not a straight A kid. Mm-hmm. 
And he's been like that since day one. Like, this is nothing new. So she was just this supportive mom. Mm -hmm. Like, just going to get to the bottom of it. I'm going to go in. I'm going to talk to your teachers. Hadn't been to one parent-teacher conference all year, mind you. I'm going to go in and talk to your teachers. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Don't you worry, son. (laughs) Yes. So me and my husband knew right then and there that something was not right. And she was calling every night. She usually only called what the court paper said one to two times a week Mm -hmm. whenever he's with the other parent. And she started every single night, every, like, I mean, on the dot. It was almost as if she had an alarm going off. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that Mm -hmm. because it was seven o'clock on the dot every single night. (laughs) Wow. So we get the letter in the mail and it's pretty much her proposed parenting plan. And it's, you know, your typical full custody parenting plan. Every other weekend, dad gets him whole nine yards. So that's kind of how it got started. And then our lawyer was like, well, you'll have the upper hand in court because she hadn't officially filed. She just had our lawyer send us a letter with her proposed parenting plan. And so our lawyer was like, you know, it'll be in your best interest in court. And the judge will, I'm not going to say favor you more, but he'll look at your reasoning more than hers if you file first. Okay. And so that's what we've done. And it's just been this long drawn out process that we we thought would be at least ended by December and we have no end in sight. <laughs> I mean, we sort of do, but at the same time, we don't. No, because I mean, you could give the depositions in February, then four months out, mm-hmm. what, June, and then yes. four months out, you're back at October. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's, it's, it's just such a drawn out process. And, it's getting dirtier and dirtier as we go on. I don't know if she's getting nervous that she's not going to win her side of the case or what, but she's starting to do some oh, very dirty things. It's like, I, I've got chills thinking about it. Like, whew. But you know, well, it makes sense because people are crazy, but she's saying she can't control the kid, that he's bad at her house, but yet she wants him all the time because it's y'all's fault he's bad at her house. Yes. And were the reasons his grades were down as well, because we just let him do whatever he wants here. And she has actual discipline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and not to mention, let's go ahead and let's talk about this year. He has been a straight A student this year for the first time in the entire time he has ever been in school. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight A's has not had one B this year. I don't know what's changed. I don't know. I don't know, but he's a straight A student now. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Maybe he just needed mom support. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you're probably right, honestly, because they were so hard on him over silly stuff. Like it, they were always trying to team up against him with the teachers. It was like a. I don't know how to explain it. Like Like bullying him, it sounds like. Yes. Yes, exactly. That was exactly what it was. Because it sounds like that that's her approach. You know, when she met with y'all, when she's talking crap about him, I mean, I can understand telling you the issues she's having, but you have to offer solutions. Yeah. And we would try to offer solutions and she would say, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. Yeah. You don't know till you and try. And just keep on gossiping. And I'm like, what is the point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the reason this is just all so crazy to us is July of 2020, my son was six months old. She came to us. We were on great terms. So I need to add that before this started, we were all on very, very good terms. Like me and her were like, I would say friends almost, friends with the devil, but friends. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, we all got along good. Like we, we were doing so good that we had a birthday party for my stepson and it was just one birthday party. We didn't have one at her house and one at our house. Like we, we got together and we had him one big birthday party with both families there. I mean, we were we were just on great terms other than these pointless talks she would want to have half the time. So Father's Day came and it was like the end of June. I don't know. Anyway, so she wanted to take him on Father's Day to the beach. And my husband was like, well, 
but this is my first Father's Day with our son and then great your then stepson. Like I would really appreciate like if I could just really get him. And she had already booked the trip for Father's Day, assuming he was going to say yes. And my husband being the cordial man that he is was like, yes, and I'll just make it up whenever you get back. So they are on their way back from vacation and she calls us wanting to have another one of these pointless talks that she likes to have. And we were like, yeah, like, where do you, you know, like, do you want to meet at the store? Because her in-laws own a gun store and it's a very, very popular gun store. I mean, they, they're very successful with it. We were like, do you want to meet up at your store? What do you want to do? And she's like, yeah, you know, since we'll have air conditioning and all that, you know, we, we just really want to talk to you guys about what's happened this week on vacation. So she tells us the ridiculous problems that she's come up with as to why their vacation was ruined because of my stepson. Literally said it was ruined. If you want to hear the reasons, I'll gladly tell you. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> okay. So they all went on a family beach trip. So it was her and he has two sisters at his mom's and she's actually got a little girl that's the same age as our son. And then they've got a three-year-old and then her husband's parents went. Okay. So her first reasoning as to just what was just horrible and ruined the first day of vacation was they had adjoining rooms. Like they had, you know, those doors where you have like in between hotel rooms and like you can switch back and forth in between rooms. Yeah. So that apparently they had one of those and he had went over to, cause they didn't have nothing to drink in their fridge. So he went over to stepdad's room. We'll just say his step papa's room and went in the fridge and was looking for something to drink. Well, so his step papa said, Hey, I've got a Coke in there that I'm trying to let get cool will you not drink it? He's like, no, I won't drink it, you know, whatever. So he gets a juice out of there. And then a couple hours later, he went back and got the Coke. Well, apparently they put him in the room for two days and he was not allowed to come out of the room. For taking a Coke? For taking a Coke. And made him stay up there by himself in the room while everybody else was out at the beach. And he's 10. (laughs) He was eight at the time. (laughs) Well, yeah, I about to turn nine at the time. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And so his steppapa told him, like, hey, guys, like, look, I don't care. Like, it's fun. Like, he's a kid. It's going to happen. He wasn't trying to be sneaky. I think he just genuinely forgot. Yeah. And, you know, my stepson's got a very bad problem with that. Like, you tell him not to do something, and he really does. He genuinely forgets. Now, you can tell when he's being sneaky, and he actually doesn't forget, and he's just doing it out of spite. But most of the time, he's just got this horrible problem of forgetting. And then he'll remember and he'll say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, I I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. And that's what he done then. And his stepdad was like, you're not sorry. This is just how you are. Like, you're staying up here and that's that. So left him up in the room. Oh, and not to mention took the TV remote with them so he couldn't watch TV. (laughs) So that was the first two days of vacation. And then they said that it ruined it even more punishing him because he just seemed down. Oh, well, wonder why. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so we just kept on listening. And she was like, so on the third day, we let him come down to the pool on the beach with us. And we felt like two days was sufficient enough punishment, as his baby mama said. (laughs) And um, she said, so then we were down at the pool. and." Step Papa jumped in the pool and he was like, Oh my gosh, you jumped so big, it was like a tsunami. And baby mama looks at us and she goes, Guys, my eyes about bugged out of my head when he said that. Like, I just could not believe the disrespect. And we were like, What? We were both trying, yeah. So we were both trying to get like, well, what was disrespectful? What was disrespectful? Like we we couldn't pick up what, what it was. And she was like, so I went and pulled him out of the pool and set him down. And I said, you better go say sorry to him. And he was like, for what? She said, guys, he didn't even 
understand what he said. (laughs) And you're thinking, we don't either. (laughs) Yeah. And my husband was like, you know, I'm not trying to be mean. He was like, but what, what did he do wrong? (laughs) (laughs) She was like, he was saying like tsunami, like he was fat. And we were like, right. Okay. Yeah. How was he calling him fat? She was like, he called him fat by saying that he was a tsunami jumping in the pool. And you could tell already how she had twisted his words inside of her own head. Uh Like she told us exactly what he said and then twisted the words right in front of us, you know? And we were like, oh my goodness. Like this is really a conversation we're having right now. Yeah. It's not like the kid said, oh my God, you made so much water splash. Like you were as big as a whale. Yeah. Yeah. Or your fat butt just. (laughs) Yeah. Like we were, we were just so like, even if he would have made a fat joke, like that him and step papa just have that relationship. His step papa pick on him. We were just so dumbfounded by it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was looking at my husband and I was like, this isn't right. Like we're, she's something is seriously wrong inside of her head. So then stepdad jumps in and he's like yeah he's like he was just so disrespectful on the trip and he said and that gave me in I I seriously wanted to call y'all and tell y'all to come down and get him because I was just sick of dealing with him and we were like what in the world and so we sat there for a minute and it was silence and she was like so I guess I say all that to say that like he's just too much for us guys like he's mean to our girls he's just literally straight out came out and said he makes us miserable we're not happy when he's there it's hell when he's there so I, we were coming to you guys to see if maybe you had thought about him going somewhere full time and we're like well, I mean we definitely discussed having him full time like you know what more could we want than having all of our kids under one roof all the time like we definitely discussed that and um she was like yeah, yeah, like, so you all are in agreement that you should have him more, too. We're like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, certainly. And she's like, great. Well, if you guys are cool with it, then we think he's happier there. And he, if he minds y'all there, like, we just don't see the point in him being here. Like, because we asked him on the way back from vacation, like, is the reason you're so bad at our house is because you just don't want to be here. And he had just straight out and came out and said, yes, like, I, I don't like it here. I'm always bored here. Like, I just, I feel at home at my dad's and I don't feel at home here. Mm-hmm. And um, she said, I want my son happy. And if he's not happy and we're not happy when he's here, then I think it's just best that he just comes to your all's house his school's in your all's city like we just feel that it's best and we were like yeah yeah like that's great and she was like okay we'll just have your lawyer write up you know a new parenting plan and bring it next week and we'll we'll get it signed and we're like okay so I was freaking out inside because if I'm being 100% honest I did not want him full-time yeah I started bawling the minute we pulled out (laughs) or my husband was like what's wrong and you know I'm like you know what's wrong like this is not what I was picturing how today was gonna go and he's like yeah don't make me tell you don't make me tell you (laughs) yeah and he was like I know it's a lot we're gonna get through it because after I had our son I struggled really really bad with the stepmom role like I don't want to say I guess you could say it was postpartum depression it was more anxiety than anything Mm -hmm. but right before we had our son we had struggled a lot with my stepson drawing like just really violent drawings. He had drew like Jesus with his head cut off and oh yeah and then like he had drew these stick people and he had drew them all on fire and I had asked him what it was and he was like I imagine making a snake of gas through Wartburg and the people that were through Wartburg, that's the town that we live in. Uh-huh. And it was him lighting the end of the snake and it setting people who was walking outside on the street on fire. And I'm like, just random people, like not like bad people, like just random people. And he's like, whoever's out that day. <laughs> I don't mean I to like, laugh, oh. but it's like, yeah, whoever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was what it was. And I was like, oh, well, okay. I was like, well, 
you know, I don't think we need to draw that because something happens, you draw that at school and DCS is going to get called on us that we're letting you watch this stuff or we're letting you, I don't know where this is coming from, but this is coming from somewhere and it's not here. We figured out where it was coming from. He stayed with my husband's mom a lot. Still does. That's actually one of the reasonings that baby mama is using to get full custody of him, saying that he stays out there too much. But she can't say that because he lived with my husband's mom while her and my husband were married. They they did not want to be parents. Oh, really? Yeah. My mother-in-law brought my stepson home from the hospital when he was born. And his mom didn't see him for a good three days after he was born, like after she had took him home from the hospital. Wow. How old were they? She was 19 and he was 23. They're four years apart. So, yeah, 23, I guess. 20, 20, yeah, 23. If they didn't want the baby, why didn't they give him up for adoption? Well, so supposedly they did. And then she had him and postpartum depression immediately kicked in. And she didn't want him. She didn't want nothing to do with him, actually. Uh And she was like, I just, like, I want to go to college. I still want my life to live on nine yards. And my husband, what he tells me, I, I can't fathom it any way that I look at it. But what my husband tells me is, He was just trying to be a supportive husband because they had gotten married while she was pregnant. He was just trying to be a supportive husband as far as she goes. And he knew that him being out there in the state of mind that she was in, him living with his mom, it was best for stepson in the state of mind that baby mama was in at the time. Right. That was what he reasons with to me. Mm -hmm. And now the reason he still lets him stay out there so much is because that's pretty much mom and dad for him. Right. That was mom and dad for so long. And that was who cared for him and who done everything for him. And he still is trying to keep that consistency in his life because his life has been, of course, less than perfect. I mean, his parents didn't have him and then they got divorced and then they both wanted to be parents of the year. And then my husband realized, like, look, he's going to have to keep staying out there because that's his home. Yeah. You know, I can't, I can't just all of a sudden just take him completely out of there. So when y'all have him, how often does he stay with the mother-in-law? It used to be a lot more. When we were like dating and stuff, he was out there probably four to five days out of out of his seven mm-hmm. that he had him. But that was like normal for him. Like my husband didn't know any better almost. We had my son and he was having to learn to be a dad all over again. It wasn't natural for him that our son actually lived with us and our, had our son. And we would be, this is just an example of how he, his mind still functions to this day with my stepson. If we're going to go out to eat, let's go drop stepson off at my mom's because that's how he's worked. Like anything he ever went and done, anything, he always dropped stepson off at my mother-in-law's. And I had to tell him because when we first got together and he'd want to just go get out of the house or he would want to go eat or something he would try to say like oh well don't you think we should take the baby to my mom and I'm like no we should not (laughs) yeah (laughs) he's coming with us (laughs) and he realizes that now it's not normal and so like now he's cut he's especially with the court stuff going on he's cut down quite a bit on letting my stepson stay out there he's only out there now maybe at the most three days a week but my son on the other hand he's he never stays away from me So he's got his mom and then my husband's got a Mm stepmom and his stepmom. She's a very organized person and she does this date night thing once a month and she sends us on a date and then keeps our kids for us. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So that's the only time that my son's ever really away from us. So it's just very different with my stepson and my husband's aware of that. Like he realizes the mistakes that he's made and like he wishes he could have done everything different, but. Now he just looks at what's best for him now. And he realizes if he, and we realize too, like if we don't let him go out there at least two days a week, he gets severely depressed. I mean, doesn't want to do nothing. Doesn't want to go play. Doesn't want to watch TV. Wants to sit and stare at the ceiling. Cause like, that's just like, I I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Cause I've never dealt with it. That's what he's used to. He's used to being around them. That's his 
for lack of a better word, that's his home. That's his comfort zone. Yes, that's his home. Like he's got his own room there. He's got, just to show you, even after they both split up, the school had my mother-in-law down as the one to call. If, if stepson ever got sick or if stepson needed something or if school got out early, my mother-in-law was the one to call. Like she was the one down pretty much as the parent. And my husband and baby mama were just down as emergency contacts. And they were fine with that. They were fine with that. And then she got with her now husband and he was like, hey, this isn't normal. (laughs) Yeah. You never have him. Because she never had him either. She was always taking him to my mother-in-law whenever they were single. And his stepdad came to the picture and was like, "Um, this isn't normal. (laughs) You need to keep your kid. And he's a very, very controlling guy. And he didn't like anyways how she talked to them at all. Mm -hmm. And so he was going from being there five to six days out of his week with her to absolutely nothing, to not even her family. He would not let her talk to her family because her family still talked to my husband's family. He's grown up a lot more since then, but whenever they first got together, it was real bad, real bad, like to the point where my husband would call her to discuss something about that son and she would send him a text and say, no, you need to call stepdad and talk to him about it. And we can talk through his phone. Oh, there was trust issues. Yes. Like it was very, very, very controlling, but he's a lot better about it now. Like a lot better about it. It got so bad that his stepdad told my stepson, Hey, when you're with us, I don't even want to hear a word about your dad's side of the family. And don't you even try to ask us to talk to Nana, which is her mom. And so it got to the point where her family was calling my husband saying, Hey, baby mama and stepson is not allowed to talk to us. Can you please let us see him? Like we've got Christmas presents for him and we want to see him. Like we want him to be involved and, and all of this. And my husband was like, yeah, I'm not going to take his family away from him. Yeah. (laughs) So my husband, the reasoning still to this day as to why he stays out there. And this is what he plans on testifying with in court is me and baby mama screwed up as young parents. And this is what the situation was. And I'm just trying to keep that consistency for him. I don't know if the judge is going to look down on that or not. Our lawyer thinks that he is going to just absolutely laugh whenever he hears that come out of her mouth. But we shall see. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it could go on and on about how interesting it is. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> so when stepson goes to buy a mom's now, uh-huh. he goes a full week without seeing mother-in-law. Yes. That's probably why he's acting up. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll act out at our house if he don't go over there. He either acts out or he, you can just tell on the look on his face. Like, I mean, it gets so bad that he won't eat. He's just miserable. Yes. I just want, I just want to go to mama's. That's what he'll tell us. I just want to go to mama's. Oh, I just want to go to mama's. And when he's sick, then that's another thing too. When he's sick, I just want mama. I just want mama. So how long did he basically live with her? Well, it was the first year was very hard on baby mama. And so he was there full time that first year. She had gotten a little better his second year of life, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was almost as if they had their own custody arrangement. So he would stay three days at mom and dad's, and then he would stay four days at my mother-in-law's. So that that was Wednesday through Sunday. And then Sunday, my husband would go and pick him up from my mother-in-law and then keep him till Wednesday and vice versa. So... Or not vice versa. That was the wrong word. That was always the schedule. They never had a weekend with him. Wow. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) They took stepson to do something like on the weekends. My mother-in-law was always the one to take him. And it was her asking if they wanted to go. More or less her telling them they need to go. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. It was a very, um, I don't know. I still can't wrap my head around it, quite frankly. I just can't fathom it. I have my own kid and I just can't even fathom That's why I say I don't think I had postpartum depression is because like with my son, I think it was just this 
desire to want just my own family, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And like, and I I voiced those concerns to my husband. I was like, I'm really sorry, but you're my husband. And I feel like, you know, you should deserve to know how I feel. And I remember telling him, like, I I get nervous now whenever stepson is here. I'm sorry to tell you, but like, I don't want him around. Like, I just, I want it to be our our family. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't a troubled child. Like, I still struggle with it some to this day, but not as near as bad as what it was after my son was first born. Yeah. I was like, like, I'm nervous. Like, I'm nervous to let him sleep in his own room, own room, because I don't know if, like, stepson could sneak up in the middle of the night. I don't know if the drawings have made me feel this way. I don't know if I just feel this way just because I just have this want for my own family. Like, I don't know. I think a lot of it probably is the drawings. Yeah. And I, I told my husband that, and he was very understanding of it he didn't flip out on me he was like let's get you help and so like I went to the doctor and they had told me that I just had really bad anxiety which that was nothing new like I had anxiety before Mm -hmm. big time but they never diagnosed me with postpartum depression it was just they said anxiety yeah I think postpartum can present itself in different ways yeah because I'm I actually I got diagnosed with prenatal depression with this pregnancy Because we just have so much going on. On top of this custody case, we actually just got custody of my 13-year-old little sister. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yes. Well, our life is completely flip-flopped. Flip-flopped within three months, four months. (laughs) And how old are you? 20. Girl. (laughs) Yes. So I was 16 when I officially became a stepmom. We had our wedding when I was 17 and I was 12 weeks pregnant with ours, baby. Holy moly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and our lawyer is also using that as a, as kind of like a a bullet, so to speak, towards baby mama, because she's trying to say that me and my stepson have no relationship. And my lawyer is going to try to use where I had stepped up at such a young age and was doing motherly things. At 16 years old, I was getting up in the mornings. I was taking him to school. I was getting him ready. I was making sure homework was done. I was having dinner cooked. I was mama. Yeah. (laughs) Whenever he was with us, I was mama. And um, it was like that for the first two years or so. And then after the drawings happened, me and my husband had a major, major disagreement when it came to that. You know, I feel like he needs to talk to somebody. He's drawing this because this is how he feels. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just feel like he needs to talk to somebody. And if nothing comes of it, great. But it's concerning me. Right. And my husband took that so offensive and took it as I was calling his kids crazy and that I was just teetotal against his kid. Mm -hmm. And he was letting, which again, this is just where I truly didn't understand that. My stepson lived with my mother-in-law. I truly didn't understand that he truly lived with my mother-in-law because my husband never told me that. Mm -hmm. He just told me he was out there a lot. And I didn't truly know that that was mama for years on end. And we had a very big disagreement because he would never let me do anything as far as decision-making when it came to stepson. It was always my mother-in-law's decision. It was never his. It was what my mother-in-law thought and what she thought was best. So we struggled a lot with that. Hey, if you want me to step up and you want me to take him to school, if you want me to be his mom whenever he's here, you're going to have to start letting me discipline him. And you're going to have to start letting me have a say on his well-being. Right. Not just when it's convenient for you. Yes. And he wouldn't. He was like, I'm sorry, I'm the parent and I'm making the decisions. I was like, but you're not making the decisions. You're making the decision to let your mom make the decisions. Yeah. (laughs) and so we disagreed big time when it came to that big 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 time (laughs) anyway so I think that has a lot to do with the resentment that I have too like I was just babysitter for so long and I hated that because I longed to be something more than babysitter Mm -hmm. I wanted to be stepson's mom whenever he was there at 16 years old I was ready to take on that role I was fully ready to you know, and I was reading parenting books. I was, I, I was going to classes. I, I mean, I was doing everything that I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, right now. But I mean, I was, I was, I want to say stepmom of the year. Like I was trying, <laughs> I really was like, I was on my A game and I got to a point where 
I'm done. Like he's not letting me truly be a parent to him. He wants me to, but he doesn't want me to. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, I'm not getting walked all over anymore. Yeah. It's like they want you to be the parent when it comes to taking care of them, but not when it comes Mm -hmm. to disciplining them. No. Yeah. That was exactly how it was for us. Yeah. So have y'all gotten past that? Yes and no. So it was right around that time that we had that really big disagreement that I had came across the Nacho Kids group. Mm -hmm. I had like read up on it. And at the time, I didn't know your podcast exist. And so I just, I read through posts that night for hours because I didn't understand what Nacho meant. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, after reading three hours worth of posts in the group, and that's no lie, I had picked up on what it was and I had had a game plan on how this new family dynamic was about to work. And so that morning I took my stepson to school and that evening my husband comes home and I sat him down and I was like, I love you to death, but our marriage is falling apart because I was 23 weeks pregnant, 24 weeks pregnant. Mm -hmm. We have our first hour's baby on the way. I want this to be the best environment possible for him. And I feel like right now where we stand and I said, and I think you can agree it is not the best environment. And he was like, so what are you saying? Are you saying you want a divorce? No, I'm not saying that. I was saying that I want to change the way that I'm a stepmom. And I said, and that's me stepping away from the parenting role and just being the fun stepmom that is here when he needs somebody to talk to. You're going to have to find somebody else to take him to school. You're going to have to find somebody else to do all these parenting things that you're having me do without doing the actual parenting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he was like, what? (laughs) What? I mean, he, he took it hard. We were in a pretty big knockout drag out that night. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, my mental health right now is what matters. I said, and my mental health is declining greatly because of this whole situation. Then I feel like if I just step back and let you do the parenting and may just be here when both of you need me as a, as a shoulder to cry on or whatever, I was like, I'm here for that, but I'm done being the babysitter. And he was like, so what do you expect me to do? Drive him out to my mom's every morning? I said, I don't know. I was like, but it's your problem now. I was like, I I can't do it no more. I'm draining myself. My mother-in-law lives probably about 20 minutes, give or take, from Mm -hmm. our house. So he'd get up every morning, get stepson up, and take him to my mother-in-law every morning because he's got to be at work at six in the morning. And she would take him to school. She would pick him up from school. She would. She was back to doing what she'd done before I was in the picture. Parenting with the parenting, <laughs> um, as I like to call it. Yeah. And I mean, it was rough at first. Like that first week was really rough. Like he was just jerk when he came in at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But it slowly started getting better. We were not fighting. Because we, all we fought about, and this was no lie, all we ever fought about was over stepson and disciplining him. And my mother-in-law making parental decisions. Mm-hmm. That's all we fought about. And we wasn't fighting. And this is a silly thing, but I was willing to, like, I was wanting to see stepson more. I was wanting to be, I wouldn't say be, I wasn't wanting to be more involved, but I was okay with him being home and just not worrying and stressing over what are we going to argue about when it comes to discipline in him tonight? Right. Are we going to argue about the iPad going off at eight Mm o'clock? Are we going to argue over the TV going off at 10 o'clock? None of that. It was none of that. Like I didn't stress. I just, I knew what I was going to do when he got there. My husband knew what he had to do whenever he came and it started flowing perfectly. If you look outside or looking in, you would think our life was absolute chaos with all the running he was having to do with my stepson. But finally, right after our baby was born, me and my husband talked about it again Mm -hmm. for the first time, for the first time since I had had that conversation with him. Wow. He was like, we don't fight. We don't nothing. Like we have that environment that you said that you thought would be impossible without him just absolutely leaving our house, like going and living with baby mama. Mm -hmm. You were certain that there was no other way to fix this. And I know, and I was like, it's fixed. (laughs) He was like, yeah. And he said, it's, it makes no sense how we're doing it, but it makes so much sense at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) It's the complete opposite of what you feel like you should be doing because society and even internally, we pressure ourselves to be the bio parent. Exactly. Yep. 
you think, oh, my role as a woman in this home is to take care of the kids while dad's out making the money. Well, that's that's yes. not how it works because, first of all, usually most women work nowadays, too. Yeah. But also, you're not the mom. That kid needs you to let their parent parent. Yep. And I and it was like an epiphany for both of us. Like we were like, oh, not doing what society tells us to do is actually what works. Mm -hmm. It was our marriage done a complete 360 after we applied the nacho method. Like, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that we never fought. We still have disagreements, especially when it comes to this court stuff. But we'd probably be divorced right now if I was still involved as I was. Yeah. I know that for 100% fact because that was where we were at. We were on the verge of divorce. Yeah. Well, and it's funny that when you told him you were going to step back, he didn't like that idea, but he never let you step fully in. Mm -mm. No, he did not like it. He was very against it. And he said, this isn't how it works. This isn't how my stepmom was. You need to be involved in his life. Like, this isn't right. And I was like, I am involved in his life. I said, I'm just not involved in his life like the way you want me to be. Right. You're just not disciplining him. Or parenting yeah. him, taking over those responsibilities, which he didn't want you to discipline him, but he wanted you to take care of him in every other way. Feeding, bathing, yes. taxi, homework, mm -hmm. everything else. Yep, everything. And like I said, that first week was hell on earth. Like I thought, oh God, I made a mistake. <laughs> I found this Facebook group and I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Stupid nacho. <laughs> this is what I get for taking advice off the internet. <laughs> My husband didn't even try to say, hey, don't you think it's time for you to start taking steps into school again? He accepted that I was stepping away. Mm -hmm. like he accepted that, fully accepted that. And that next week he came back. He had already had everything planned out as far as where he was meeting his mom at that morning. It was just this perfect schedule. And slowly, as the weeks went on, it was just it just started flowing so much better. Everybody was so much happier. There was no more tension in my house. There was no more stressing over what we're going to argue about that night. Oh gosh, I just, I wish I could go back and experience the moment that I felt this is working because mm -hmm. it was the best feeling. It was just a sigh of relief, especially knowing I had a baby on the way. And it's great because like I didn't have any other responsibilities after my baby was born, other than being a mom to my baby, mm -hmm. which is how it, I felt like how it should be as a new mom. Right. And I didn't have to worry about, okay, will you take my stepson to school for me this first week that I'm home? Like, no, like he already has, he's already got a place to go and it's not me. And it's, I don't know, it's just such a good feeling. And we're still applying this today. Like he wakes up in the morning, he takes him to my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law takes him to school. She'll pick him up at three o'clock today. And because they go to different schools, I got to go up and get my 13 year old little sister at three o'clock and it just works out. I'm so proud of you for sticking with it, even when it felt like you'd made a huge mistake, because within that week, your husband obviously started seeing there was some good in this mm -hmm. for things to calm down so quickly. Yeah. And he realizes it to this day, like he doesn't ask me to do anything as far as stepson goes. It's his mom or I'm going to have to take off work and go do it. And that's what he does. In the event that my mother-in-law can't do it, my husband, he will literally take off work and go pick him up from school instead of ask me. Like, that's how much he does not want to go back to the old ways. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm being honest when I say that. Yeah. Like, I mean, he is dead set. Like, he doesn't want to ask me to do anything. And he's told me sorry since then, too. He said, you stepping away has also made me realize how horrible I was treating you as his stepmom like I wasn't truly letting you be a parent like you always said and he and he he still apologizes to me to this day because mm -hmm. we went to therapy shortly after I had started applying the nacho method and the therapist told him he was like what do you expect you're you want her to be a babysitter but you don't want her to be a parent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he was like yeah yeah it's crazy it's crazy how it's worked and it's crazy how the impact it's had on our family and and not even that it's a benefit for everybody like my mother-in-law still gets to be what she wants to be in his life on our weeks of course and my husband doesn't feel so guilty about letting him spend time with my mother-in-law because it works for us and our family right too now at a time that it didn't 
it didn't work. I would get so aggravated whenever we'd be on the third night of him being out at my mother-in-law's. This isn't how you parent. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And stepping away and doing the nacho method was the best thing. It was just, I know I've said that about 10 times now, but I'll probably never stop (laughs) saying it. (laughs) I'm so glad it helped you because, I mean, I know. I know how much it helped us and how much it changed my life. It truly is life-changing. And I'm not just saying that because I created it, but it is. And it's freeing. And it's, I don't know if you've learned to apply it in other aspects of your life, but girl, I nacho like crazy. I nacho all kind of stuff. If it's going to cause me stress, I'm out of there. Yeah. Um, Well, see, and I've I've learned to do that too with my mother-in-law, like my husband, like just some of the things, not only with stepson, but just in general. Every time it never fails. He goes up to my mother-in-law's, even if my stepson isn't there, he's up there for an hour or more. Oh, I got to go stop by my mom's for a minute and grab something. No, you're there an hour or more. And I used to get so aggravated about that. Mm -hmm. After the whole stepson situation, that was the only thing we thought about was him letting his mom like just come in our marriage and just kind of do what she wanted. Like she'd walk in my house whenever she felt like she needed to. (laughs) Or I told my husband, I was like, look, you know what? You want to stay out there forever whenever you're just supposed to stop by? Fine. I don't care. But please do not let her just show up at my house. Like it's her house. (laughs) Yeah. So finally he never done that. He never told her like, Hey, please let my wife have some privacy or please give my wife some kind of notice that you're going to show up at the house before you get there. He never had that conversation with her, but um, she definitely took the hint whenever she showed up to my house one day looking for sour cream. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, I have some. I was like, but you're not taking it because I'm making tacos tonight for dinner. And she was like, oh, I can just stay around for dinner and just take it after dinner. What? And I looked at her and I rolled my eyes and I said, I'm going to get in the shower. And she left and she's not coming back without telling me she's coming since. <laughs> she drove 20 minutes to borrow sour cream from you? Yeah, 20 minutes. I'm like, you passed not one, not two, but three grocery stores on your way here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we had our own issues with that. And let's just say it's very important that boundaries be created with the in-laws prior to having a confrontation, we will just say. Oh, yeah. Well, I want you, once all this court crap's over, I want you to come back and be a guest and tell us what all happened. I will. I will, for sure. Hopefully it's depositions in court then over with, but... There's honestly no telling at this point. I know. I know. Well, thank you so much for being a guest and sharing your story. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. It's often that we hear that stepmoms say, well, I was a stepkid myself, so I figured I would understand how this works or it would be easy for me or that my blend now would be the same as my blend growing up. No. Mm Mm-hmm. Not saying you won't have some similarities, but more than likely it's going to be different because there's so many variables and dynamics in a blend. Are you dealing with different people? Mm Mm-hmm. That's all it takes. (laughs) And of course, they used to get along with by a mom. Used to, keyword. Now they're back in court. Mm. Happiness and joy. Y'all know how I feel about the court system. Mm Mm-hmm. I can't imagine being in a blend, being pregnant, going through crap stuff, and then having custody of my younger sister. Mm -hmm. But I'm proud of her for stepping up and helping get her sister out of a bad situation. You know, when your dad passes away, you'll get custody of your younger sister. That's not funny. She'll be 50, but you'll still get custody. (laughs) So you're saying my dad's going to pass away in six years, seven years? If he had his choice, he'd probably make it today. (laughs) (laughs) He would have made it last year. What are you talking about? (laughs) And I will not be getting custody of her. Thank you very much. We've talked about this, David. They are not my responsibility. I will nacho my sister (laughs) and other family members that feel the need to mooch. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll see. There's your clarity, people. Y'all heard it. It's it's on the podcast. I may have to reference this <laughs> one one day. <laughs> Episode 141, David. <laughs> I might have to delete this part out, y'all, because he will use it against <laughs> me. 
what'd you buy her that for? Thought she was going to nacho the moochers. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're going to let y'all go because David's got to get back to work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, folks, that is our show for today. Thanks for listening. And remember that life is always good. When you nacho. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nacho Kids podcast. Find us online at nachokids.com. Until next time, remember, life is good when you nacho.